Welcome to the Aptive Edge, a TTI podcast discussing the role of Aptive's broad suite of products in electronic systems from the highway or the factory floor to low earth orbit and everywhere in between. And now, let's hear from the experts from Aptive and our TTI specialists. Thanks, Jim. And hello, everyone. Thank you for turning into this episode of our podcast. My name is Gabe Osorio, Director of Transportation Marketing for the Americas for TTI's Transportation Business Unit. And with us today is Nitesh Bohadar, Senior Application Engineer from Aptiv. Welcome to the show again, Nitesh. Hey, Gabe. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Uh, well, this episode I'm excited for because we talk now a little bit more into uh, the technical side of the 48-volt architecture and, and really near and dear to, to, to my heart, design considerations and kind of what that looks like. So, Natash, first question I have for you is when OEMs uh, are looking to adopt 48-volt systems, what are some of the challenges that they might find in adopting it? So, I'd say there are overall three key concerns when adopting 48 volts. Um, connector design to prevent arcing by considering appropriate creepage and clearance distances, protection against pollutants that can cause corrosion, and proper separation of voltage levels to avoid cross-voltage issues. You want to make sure that your 12-volt wires are separated from your 48-volt wires so you don't expose your 12-volt systems to 48 volts in case of a short circuit. That makes perfect sense. So in 48-volt systems then, what makes them different from those traditional 12-volt systems in terms of design consideration? So that 48-volt system operates you know, at a higher voltage um, than the 12-volt system. And that reduces your current by a factor of four for, you know, relatively the same power level. This allows for smaller wires and connectors, saving weight as well as cost. But it also introduces some new risks like microarching and electromechanical corrosion. While those terms might sound scary, they're actually quite manageable with the right design and application. So microarching, how does that differ between a 12-volt system and a 48-volt system? Because I would imagine they'd potentially be pretty different. Yeah, you know, microarcing themselves can occur really on any system, but arcs at 48 volts carries more energy and can last a little bit longer than those at 12 volts, uh, potentially then damaging your connectors. That's why creepage and clearance requirements become critical, even though the 48 volts is still considered low voltage. Proper connector spacing is essential to mitigating some of that arcing risk. That makes sense. Is this the only risk with arcing as it's related to this? Well, when you made a connector, one of the most important aspects is to have the terminals engage and meet. And that's what we call a wipe distance. Um, If terminals aren't fully engaged, you risk an intermittent connection, which is how you end up getting those micro arcs. Um, And that can create oxides, damage terminals, or lead to system level issues. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very, very interesting. So in terms of Aptiv specifically, what does Aptiv do to prevent some of these risks in that architecture design? So our connectors uh, firstly, follow creepage and clearance requirements. Uh, the concept of creepage and clearance will be familiar to a lot of people using high voltage systems. At 48 volts, it's the same concept, but at a lower voltage, so a smaller gap is required than those true high voltage systems. And help me out here. What does creepage and clearance mean? So, yeah, the terms seem complex, but um, we can easily break that down. Uh, let's start with creepage. Creepage is the shortest path between conductors along an insulating surface. Um, And then clearance is the direct air gap between those conductors. In essence, think of creepage as hiking a trail between two cabins. The trail is on the forest floor and has to wind around terrain and obstacles. Clearance is like having that direct zip line between the cabins going right through the air. And it's the shortest straight path line. You know, no obstacles, just open space. Uh, and both are critical in preventing arcing and ensuring connector safety. Yeah, great analogy. That ha- that's very helpful in, in terms of how to uh, help define what clearance and creepage, uh, you know, really truly are. So that that helps, uh, I think, take us to the next step here, which is obviously the design essentials for interconnects themselves in 48 volt systems. So are there specific connector features then? that help mitigate you know, those risks that we're talking about for 48 volt systems. Absolutely, yeah. Um, at the component level, robust terminal systems with reliable secondary locks prevent pushouts and pullouts, which in turn prevent micro arcs. And at the connector level, sealed housings protect against pollutants that can lead to corrosion. Um, lastly, you know, at that system level, that proper separation of 12 volts and 48 volt circuits 
prevents ground faults. Um, these are all essential to consider 48 volt systems. And when you say, just to clarify, at the system level, the separation of 12 and 48 volt circuits, does that mean that in a wire harness bundle, you obviously wouldn't have both a 12 and 48 volt uh, uh, power line? Or is it that specific where you're trying to literally separate them in the vehicle architecture? Or is it just making ensuring something a little bit different than that to, to avoid, obviously, uh, mixture or contact or whatever might become the problem? Yeah, I wouldn't go as far to say that you need a separate harness uh, for the 12 volt and 48 volt systems, but you definitely want to take into account the risks of, you know, if there is a short between those two um, or there's some kind of ground fault. Sure. Okay. Thank you. That's helpful. Um, and, you know, previous episode, we talked a little bit or hinted a little bit about the orange connectors, right, in terms of safety. So keeping in mind that obviously 48 volt uh, is, is significantly higher in, in, in voltage than a 12 volt system. Is there a specific color coded uh, safety reason or safety color that should be used for 48 volt connectors? Yeah, um, that's an interesting one. So Aptiv and you know a few others in the industry uh, consider RAL 5012 the standard for 48 volt connectors. Um, and this light sky blue uh, is the same that forklifts use uh, to indicate their 48 volt systems, actually. I see. So is that a standard that's been in place for some time? So then clearly if it's coming from, you know, that material handling side of things, or is this a newer standard to, to your knowledge? Yeah, you know, the color coding is really to let, you know, maintenance staff quickly identify what voltages they're working with, mm -hmm. uh, which is the same reason that high voltage connectors are typically orange, like we discussed in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. So when it's easy to identify the difference during assembly and maintenance, it leads to safer conditions and lower downtime. Great. And what role would you say that uh, ceiling plays in 48 volt connector design uh, as, as engineers are making those considerations? Yeah, ceiling is critical for protecting 48 volt connectors from environmental exposure, especially moisture, dust, and corrosive agents. At 48 volts, even small amounts of contamination can increase the risk of arcing or corrosion. So we design connectors with robust sealing systems, including mat seals, cable seals, uh, and some overmolded components. And that ensures long-term reliability in those harsh conditions. So sealing then is not just about durability, it's also about the safety in the electrical system? Exactly. A well-sealed connector helps maintain insulation integrity and prevents conductive paths from forming across those surfaces. And that's especially important in applications like engine compartments, marine environments, or industrial and robotics, where historically exposure is high. You mentioned marine. Just a, a side question here. Is, to your knowledge, is the marine industry, boats, et cetera, uh, ripe for this kind of conversion as well too? Because I know we've, we've kind of talked a little bit about construction, you know, commercial vehicle, automotive, not really so much about marine. Yeah, definitely. There are certain systems in marine environments that can definitely use 48 volts. Moving on, I think... Uh, understanding obviously the ceiling side of things uh, the, and how critical they are to the solution, then what standards can you provide or, or does somebody, an engineer use to guide themselves in designing in a 48 volt connector design? So there are actually a few different standards uh, depending on the industry. And I know what you're thinking right now. It's that I can never just give you the simple answer. <laughs> right. There's obviously going to be uh, a, a quite a few, I'm sure. What Can you elaborate maybe on just a few of the most prominent uh, standards or, or sets that, uh, that are being considered? Yeah. So um, I would say IEC 60664-1, um, that's one that sets creepage and clearance requirements like we talked about. And that's, you know, really those safe distances between metal parts to prevent arcing. When we think about that in terms of the design side, that's mainly defining the geometry inside the connector. There's, there's also a low voltage connection standard, abbreviated as LVCS, and that outlines 48 volt connector interfaces for automotive and other industries. So this drives different OEMs and device suppliers to all use a more common interface in their 48 volt systems. And then beyond these, there are also some other SAE and ISO standards that address the performance side, but we don't really need to get into those. Makes sense. Just to elaborate a little bit further on the LVCS. So that reminds me a little bit of, you know, maybe a US car type solution, right? Where there's a standard that's set across for any and all manufacturers uh, to, to meet, essentially, so that an OEM has 
a standard they can use and, and know and understand it, correct? I mean, it's very similar to that, the LVCS standard. Oh, yeah. That's really exactly the same historical um, scenario between the two. Uh, LVCS, you know, m- more prominently from the automotive side again, mm-hmm. uh, but again, making its way into other industries to set a standard across them all. So with all that said, is 48 volt safe from a shock hazard per- perspective uh, or safer, I guess, right? Um, uh, you know, in your opinion. <laughs> so, you know, even with over voltage up to 60 volts, 48 is still considered low voltage and safe from shock hazards. But that's a blanket statement covering so many different situations out there. So proper isolation, grounding and safety are still essential. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. A couple additional questions I have for you, Nitesh. In in designing uh, an, an electrical system for 48 volt, I think we mentioned before that it's a full system change. It's application and device, it's interconnects, it's wire, it's all of that. As OEMs are moving towards 48 volt, uh, you know, architecture design, how involved are the device manufacturers themselves? Uh, you know, is there a lot of collaboration between OEM and device? Does the device come first and then the OEM, the, you know, the chicken before the egg or, you know, the egg before the chicken? That whole discussion, I think, is, is interesting. There is, there's a lot of device suppliers out there. So, you know, it doesn't always work one direction or the other. But, you know, it's definitely what very similar to what you're talking about is, you know, upgrading the device manufacturers, um, you know, all the components on the board making that move. But this is more in today's day and age, you're working together. There's a lot of collaboration. You want to make sure everyone's on the same page because that's how you'll get the quickest and best results. Makes sense. And I imagine like anything else, uh, you know, the design is going to chase where the dollars are going, right? So if, if OEMs are investing and making conscious decisions to move to 48 volt, those device manufacturers are going to follow suit as well too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, excellent, Natesh. Thank you very much. I know I learned uh, quite a bit about 48 volt uh, design. I appreciate you being here with us today and please stick around for our next episode with Natesh where we'll be talking more specifically about applications in vehicle and other Uh, industries on vehicle applications as well, too. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you for joining us today on the Aptive Edge, a TDI podcast where we discuss everything from Aptive's broad suite of products. For more information, visit TTI.com.